Okay. This is the House Healthcare Committee. It's uh, Friday, March 12th, about 2.30 p.m. And we are reconvening to continue and hopefully conclude our deliberations on House Bill 210. Uh, so, yes, I think everybody's here. Um, <clears throat> so again, I wanna, oh, so since I saw you last, <laughs> I took a side trip to appropriations <laughs> and uh, I was just forgetting, it's like, okay, yeah, that was since I saw you last. Um, did an enthusiastic presentation of our proposal to them and uh, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, we will, so they, they said, well, you know, we'll look forward to seeing your bill. I said, okay, well, we haven't finished it yet, but we're working on it. We're getting close. Um, and I also want to uh, express my appreciation again to Anne for stepping in this morning and helping move things forward, uh, both in my absence and once I was back. I, it's great to have a team, I'll tell you. It's great to have a team who can step in for each other from time to time. And, uh, and that was greatly appreciated on my part as the committee chair. So I was trying to think about where we are in our process here today. Um, and I'm aware of one other piece that Representative Donahue actually would like to bring forward. And I think she got caught up in doing what I usually do, which is chairing the meeting and mentioned to me that she forgot to put her hand up. So as to something she wanted to bring forward to the committee. So why don't we start there and then we're gonna check in with others and see if, see if others have further things. And then my thought is then we'll check in with Katie because she's done some redrafting for us. And then we'll see where we are as a committee and possibly proceed to committee discussion, but see whether we are, whether there's any other additions or suggestions that need to be brought forward. So Representative Donahue. Thank you. And again, my apologies. I actually wrote it down a little note to myself so that I wouldn't forget. And there I was sitting saying, anybody else? Nobody else? And it's like, um, so uh, folks will recall that um, I think it was Wednesday. I mean, we, we had some testimony that made reference to the impact of the eugenics movement in uh, Vermont. And that same day, I'd been asked to go in and testify um, to um, the uh, General Housing and Military Affairs Committee on the eugenics apology uh, resolution. And I forwarded to committee members the package of information that I had researched and done several years earlier on the issue. Um, and as I told the uh, Housing General Military Affairs Committee, I mean, this, this just is um, very much connected and related to um, the work we're doing in terms of a very strong example of something that happened in history um, that we all now recognize was a significant injustice and that to this day significantly affects um, those community, those impacted communities. So, um, so I would like to propose um, an addition to our findings um, based on the testimony uh, we heard and the materials I shared uh, and ask Katie to uh, uh, to uh, draft that, and she has it available now for folks to look at. Great. So, Katie, would you share that with us? Yes. Let me switch my screen. Here is the new proposed finding, Vermont's 1931 sterilization law and its impacts on individuals who are Black, Indigenous, and persons of color individuals who are LGBTQ and individuals with disabilities is an example of past injustice in the healthcare system that continues to impact members of these communities in the present day. Thank you. And do you wish to comment further? Uh, no, I think that summarizes it. And um, uh, I, I had forgotten to ask Colleen. Colleen has now posted the materials that I shared with the committee, um, I guess on Wednesday when I sent out um, a lot of the background information about what happened at the time and um, so forth. So I'd like to ask a question because, um, but 
I, I, I'm fine with what you have proposed here. Uh, in fact, I want to support what you proposed here. I'm interested in that it does not make any reference to the term eugenics and thinking that uh, for many people, as we move to have a eugenics apology resolution, uh, as there's a rising awareness of eugenics and what it's meant for the state of Vermont, that to reference the 1931 sterilization law, there may be people who don't make that connection. And I'm wondering if we might add a reference that uses the term eugenics so that there's a link between what we're doing here and the other work that's happening in other parts of the legislature and in the public. Thank you, yes, I mean, that's absolutely is what I should have suggested. So I, I just sure can, can can work that is. right in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Friendly amendment. Yeah, okay. Uh, Representative Burroughs, Burroughs, sorry, Burroughs. Okay. Um, do, uh, do you think we could add something about forced sterilization? Well, we could get we could get a lot longer, but I, I mean, I just kept it brief. I think eugenics needs to be referenced, but um, because of the point in time we are, um, I would have liked to have thought of and drafted more. But you know, it it actually um, it, it gets into a longer discussion because it technically was not forced; it was technically always with consent. The problem was that it was not clearly not true uh, informed consent. And I, in the materials I shared, I even shared an example. Of yeah, I remember story. reading that, yeah. 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 Um, but but it, that's much longer and, and we didn't take it test. Is. It is. Yeah, you're right, you're right, thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Chena, is that your hand? Yep, yeah. okay, Representative Chena and then Representative Golden. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate this addition, especially after the testimony we heard. Mm -hmm. um, so I do appreciate it. And um, I will review. I, if you sent it already, I didn't see it. So I'll look for those documents or I'll review. I, I apologize. I did not email it. It was just Katie just put it up on the screen. I will. Oh, on the wait, screen. Wait, wait, are you referring to the actual language of what she's proposing, Brian? Or no, to no um, and you mentioned that the other day there was testimony or something. I'll go review. Oh, oh yes, I did. I that's right. You you should have that. I can resend it easily. No, but... I can look for it. I'll review okay. it, but I can support this without seeing your testimony because I I'm aware. The one thing I would ask you is, um, with all the other findings in this bill, we've identified a source material and put it in that list. So if there's a way you can send me things, I'll add them to that list and we'll update it so we have the most accurate possible. Less. I already, uh, Katie asked me for it and I sent it to her. So all okay. I have to do is forward the Great. email I sent Great. her. Great idea. I will, I will fix it during our meeting today and send it out to you all within a few minutes. Okay, and Colleen just sent a note. Her My material is now also on the committee page. Great, thank you. Good, thank you, Brian. Representative Goldman. I was just hoping you could post that, that paragraph again. It went by fast and I just needed a moment. Well, and it's been adjusted as well, so we all need to see it there. Oh, perfect, yes. Thank you, Katie, that That's great. does it exactly right. The legislative uh, issue, um, Anne, regarding mm -hmm. sterilite, Okay, sterilization law, obviously. Okay, yep, I see. Yeah. That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else having questions or comments about the addition of this into the findings? Uh, hearing none, I think there's consent and consensus to add this to the findings. So Katie, if you would do that. I have, well, I have one question and, and sure. go ahead and add it. I, it's not, where in the, uh, where on our page is that Anne's material? Now I, I read through some of it, Anne, and I, I think it's the same stuff I read through that got, got sent, but I'd like to. Where on the committee page, is that the question? Yeah. yeah. It's under today's date, uh, under witness and Donahue. H210 files related to the Vermont. Okay, Eugenics okay, okay. I got you. Thank you. 
and I have to say, I've, it's, I've read some of it in the past, but I have not had a chance to review it again. I look forward to doing that, but um, thank you for sharing it with us. Okay. Um, well, then let me ask, uh, following up on the work that Ann was doing with the committee, are there other issues to be brought forward by committee members to either make an addition or a change in the uh, substance of the bill? So the one change that I know that we noted just toward the end and was when Susanna Davis was with us had to do with the reference to the number of meetings. And Katie, perhaps you could review, review with us proposed language that would address that issue. Sure, I wasn't sure if you were moving forward with that suggestion. So I just put a note to myself um, oh. instead of writing it out. Um, but right now it says for not more than six meetings annually and the change would read um, for as many meetings as the appropriation permits. What if we were just, can I make a suggestion because it picks up on what Susanna Davis said and I think, but uh, say uh, for meetings as deemed appropriate by the commission but not more than uh, not more than beyond the appropriations there's something or you know in better wording but yeah i would just leave the appropriations out well i, I think the concern well, was well, 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 as deemed appropriate by the advisory commission within the appropriation provided because as Susanna did make the point of saying like, okay, we're going to have to work within that, but give us the discretion, not how many, you know, like maybe it's, maybe it's not five meetings of the full commission. Maybe it's 10 meetings of three subgroups or that type of thing. Does that, does that work? Can I make a recommendation? Please. Just be silent. Don't mention any amount of meetings. So it's just inherent. You don't have to be specific about the meetings. Just don't mention how many meetings you're going to have. Just just say they're they can have per diem compensation reimbursement expenses as per the statute. At the end. Well, I think the only issue I, I hear you, Nolan, and I know having been in the appropriations committee that they're going to raise this question, and that will then leave us absent or silent on what we're, our thoughts are. And I think. Um, okay. Because I think that would, in, if, if we knew that that was a, it leaves it open-ended, I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, let's let me open it to the committee for thinking about that uh, without getting lost in the issue, but uh, Representative Golden? Well, I was hoping that we could add the language advisory commission or work group um, to acknowledge that there will be per diem for work groups. Um, so I don't know how people feel about that. And then I guess we do need to have a top number if we're gonna to have to say within, within the allocation of whatever that, whatever that right language would be. But I don't know how people feel about adding work group compensation. I, I think the way it's worded, it's up to, it's, it's any kind of meetings. Yeah, I, I think this gives the commission flexibility to determine okay. when and how. So that's the deemed appropriate thing? Yep. Okay. Thank you. It doesn't say necessarily as a full full commission yeah. meeting. So. Got it. But what to um, Logan, I mean, Nolan's point, um, if we leave it, so the appropriations committee does want a number, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, they haven't, they're, they're not. If it's too open-ended, they may put parameters on they're it that gonna, we don't gonna, want. Yeah, that's what and I'm thinking. If I we don't give them guidance on what we're thinking, what we mean, that there's some control here, the control is the advisory committee deeming it appropriate rather than totally up in the air. They may put in language like, well, we think it should be six meetings a year. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. 
I, I think I'd rather leave that in and leave it to the advisory commission to how to structure it. Because otherwise, yeah, I think this, yeah, I think that's my best judgment right now. Okay, not seeing other major comments or objections. I think I'm gonna suggest that we go with this language for now. Okay. Uh, Katie, let me ask you this, because uh, there were a number of suggestions that you integrated on behalf of, the, as a result of the walk through and markup that was happening. Have they been integrated into this document at this time or are they just, what, what's the status? Yes, um, all the changes have been integrated. I'm calling this amendment 4.1 and I've been making changes as we go. It has not been edited yet, but if you would like a walkthrough of what you've added, I'm happy to do that if that would be useful. Can you do that? Can you highlight for us the changes that you've added? Sure. That'd be terrific. Let's see. Okay, so the first section is um, findings. Sorry, I'm still getting to the top of the document. So the only change I believe in the findings was the new um, subdivision 10 with regard to the eugenics movement that we just looked at. So I'm scrolling down to confirm there are no other places where we have yellow highlighting. Great, so no. you did. You, so you this was the only change. Did yellow highlighting so, so we could tell what's what. Right, so yeah. Really appreciate that. So this is the new finding that you just looked at. So I'll keep moving. Mm -hmm. Next, um, there was a change or um, an error caught in section two, which is um, removing the second time that physical structure of communities is, um, is mm -hmm. mentioned. So this will be, this won't appear at all, but just for the sake of acknowledging that I caught it, it's struck through and highlighted. The next change, See, now we're in the um, health equity chapter. There are no changes to the definitions. Um, with regard to the commission now, um, we had new language around membership. So there's language that any other members at large that the advisory commission deems necessary to carry out the functions of this section, including including ensuring equitable representation and a balance between impacted communities and healthcare provider perspectives based on a majority vote of the members. And then um, we have um, sort of language here about the terms. So the term of office for each appointed member shall be three years with the exception that members at large, which is what we just created in um, subdivision BB, shall, have, shall each have a term of one year. And then of the members first appointed who are not designated as at-large members, four shall be appointed. Um, so that's just to kind of um, create some parameters and not get into trouble with all of our um, numbers for the rollout of terms in this subdivision too. Yeah. Next we have- Can I ask a um, question about- uh, Great. Representative Goldman has a question. I was wondering if we talked about capping the number of at-large so we didn't go into, uh, you know, extremely large. Yeah, we had a whole discussion. We did discuss it. Yeah, there was a proposal. I think where we had, we had ended up at the time was that we weren't. We were going to leave it to the uh, commission, but... Oh, I definitely. thought it went the other way, that we would have it a number, but... But I can go, yeah, I mean, I, I could see having like three or four, just at least, I mean, if we, I want to come back and say we want to add 10, that sounds big and large. So just to at least have some reasonable reasonability of size. So people don't say, well, what if they want 100 people on there when we go and present it? Just seems like an opportunity for pushback. If you wanted to do that, the language could read um, something like not more than four at-large members that the advisory commission deems necessary. Just change the lead-in language on that subdivision BB. There had been some discussion of capping the group at 30. There's currently, what, 27? I mean, it's still a large group, but maybe. It's a... That's only three, yeah, three others. 
I'd rather leave it to the commission and they've are, they're already bound by the bound by the meetings. appropriation now. Yeah. 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 They'll have fewer meetings if they have too many members. Yeah. I, I trust that they'll be able to figure this out. Okay. I feel that way. But I'm I'm just catching, I'm not sure if, if we may be missing a comma in terms of the concept of the at-large members, because I think I'm th I was thinking of it in terms of sort of two categories. One category is including ensuring equitable representation and a balance between impacted communities. The other category and it is in that we are including healthcare provider perspectives. So rather than say hmm? oh, that's rather than hard. suggesting that it's a bal equitable balance between impacted communities and healthcare provider perspectives. Okay. I'm with that's you, Anne, I noticed that too. I, I thought that's what you were trying to say, balance between impacted communities and health. No, okay. No. Okay. Um, let's see. So in order including... to carry out the functions is right. Then okay. including ensuring equitable representation and a balance between impacted communities, comma. Comma, comma. Okay. And in other words, and ensuring healthcare provider perspectives. Yeah. I don't know if you need to repeat the ensuring or not to make it. Yeah, correct, I was but just wondering if I are, are break it out into a list. Maybe I will. Including, maybe not ensuring. Because, you know, this including, well, right. Ensuring me means it's a directive to do it. Yeah, yeah. And or and to include, uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, and that, um, how about that? Well, it helps if I write in English. The healthcare provider perspectives. Um, are are taken into account are well are included we want their right that healthcare i was trying to stay away from included double just, double use of the yeah. word right, right <laughs> i right. think it starts to get confusing yeah yeah perspectives um are, are represented involved, are represented that's great perfect as well as healthcare provider perspectives Mm -hmm. and, and that healthcare provider perspectives are represented, right? Because you want to keep the same syntax in the phraseology. I'm sorry, are you asking for a change? No, I, oh, I'm okay. agreeing with what it is. I, okay. <laughs> I think this works. Does it work? Generally, yep. Okay, let's. Could you go to page sixteen at the bottom, please? Okay, no problem. Yeah, that's good because I was having trouble where where it goes. Could you now slide down to BB again? Had to have both pages on the screen at I once. Know. Because what I'm kind of thinking that uh, that it's a little more proactive if we say the advisory commission may deem necessary to include, but it's just language and forget it. It's yeah, part I of a list, so list, it yeah, makes yeah. it a little tricky. We don't want to start it like it's a new sentence. I yeah. know that's where I'm hung up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we folks ready? If I keep scrolling, okay, yep. great. So the other change in the commission, um, so I, I did a word search to make sure I had advisory committee um, kind of interchangeably with commission. So I've tried to catch com commission every time to make sure that we have the right terminology. Um, and then with regard to the report, there's the data collection sentence. So the advisory commission is encouraged to base recommendations on the data collected and analysis completed pursuant to section 253 of this title. 253 is the next section. And there were some changes there. Um, with regard to compensation and reimbursement, you've decided not to cap the meetings. So for meetings as deemed appropriate by the advisory committee within the appropriation provided. So next we're in the data collection section. Again, I corrected 
committee to commission. Um, and then we have language um, in this subsection B, this was about the Department of Health um, analyzing equity data. And so there's a new sentence that the department's analysis shall be used to measure over time the impact of actions taken to reduce health disparities in Vermont. The data informing the department's analysis shall be made available to the public in accordance with state and federal law. Um, there are no changes to um, the duties of the executive director of racial equity, um, meaning edits by the committee. There is a, a proposed change in addition. Um, there were no proposed changes to the report on continuing education. There are no proposed changes to the appropriation section or to the effective date section. Okay. So I can tell you that the editors um, are expecting it. I don't know if you want me to send it preemptively while you discuss so they have, um, just so you're not waiting for it. Okay. Um so my question, the question before us right now is, are, are there any other suggestions to bring forward? I see Representative Peterson's hand. I, I don't have a proposal for a change, um, but I'm suggesting when we're done with this particular piece of the process, we get that bill back and be given like 10 minutes to take a look at it. It as a whole bill. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Chair well, Lippert, so, uh, some time to digest because so we've changed. Yeah. Pardon me. I hear you. Yeah. I yeah. Hear you. Okay. We can. I think. I think within the time frame at this point, we can do that. So, but should Katie also send it to the editors for the technical? That's to do <clears> the first technical. I hear from, first, I want to hear whether Representative Page is bringing forward another suggestion because if he is, then we would want to try to integrate that. Representative Page. Uh, it's just a thought. I know there was some uh, testimony um, emphasizing LBGTQ youth. Mm -hmm. And God, I hate to suggest this because you know how much I hate these commissions. Um, but oh. do we need a member of the youth to be a member of the commission. And I'll just throw it out there mm -hmm. and let you think about it. I mean, we've got members of everything else. And I know it was a big deal with the testimony, but um, it's just a thought that maybe you might want to include um, a younger member of the generation. And I'm sorry, I couldn't hear all of Woody. Can someone just fill in you? Say, saying should youth be included on the commission? And, and I'm wondering if that's help. The the uh, add the at large members we added in order to get equitable representation of the affected groups would allow them to do exactly that with one of those. Outright Vermont, which is a youth serving organization could appoint youth as their representative. So oh, could are they out. on the list? Oh yeah, right. They could. That's yeah. what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. So mm -hmm. I'll lower my hand. I was going to say, you know, we, out, we could just talk with outright or we could write in, like we could write in that's a youth, but I think we could just I talk know. with them and they'll and figure it out. So much. There's been so much emphasis on mm -hmm. younger generations participating mm -hmm. in our government mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. other activities. Um, you know, it's just a thought. But it's a good I think thought. it's a good thought. Yeah, it was a good thought, Woody. Anything else? Oh, I'm seeing hearts. <laughs> <laughs> They're for Woody, because we love Woody. Okay. And I love all of you too. I know that. <laughs> You're like 30 feet tall right now, Woody. Oh yeah. Well, you have oh, I heard that. Okay. Let's, let's, it, so. let's focus ourselves again. Uh, okay. So, uh, so I think with that, I'm going to suggest, I'm not hearing anyone else asking to bring something forward at this point. Oh, Representative China. Um, I just want to, in terms of like, not like it, it's just a detail. Like I'm trying to finish that findings document. And Katie, can I like have you look at how I tried to document this testimony and see if it's acceptable? And then if it is, sh I'll share with the committee the final document just for the record. Sure, I'm happy to okay. look at so it. I'll, I'll send you an email really quick. Okay. I'm trying okay. to get things done. Okay. And uh, Katie, I would say then based, and Woody, I see your hand is still up, but I'm assuming it was from before. Um, so Katie, I would say with that, I think you could send the document to the editing and let them edit. If we make a changes, we'll have to deal with it. But that's at this point, 
we have gone through the process of markup and invited any suggestions. And I think we've incorporated a, a fair number. Um, and so, uh, and I think, okay, so, so, let me, so let me just, as the chair, let me see where we are. Um, we've gone through the review of the document. We've gone through the markup. We've inc inc incorporated editing. Um, I'm thinking, let me check with Representative Peterson and others, but maybe now is the appropriate time for us to take the time for people to actually look at and digest even prior to editing, because editing is not going to change anything oh. substantive. No. I mean, we have, we have now the document before us. And it would seem to me that maybe before committee discussion is the time to give everyone the chance to actually look at the document in full you know, as the new language has been incorporated, give people a chance to digest that and then come back and engage in committee discussion. Does that, does that meet what you were looking for, Representative Peterson? Yeah, okay, I think. And I, I think I'm just sorry. a question, that new language is, if we go to the website where it says bill, that'll be- no, uh, we, Katie needs to send it. Okay, so look for our She's, email, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have Katie send to our committee members the same language that she's sending to editing. Is that right, Katie? Yeah. So we will be looking at the same document that when we anticipate it comes back, it might be like comma was changed, but not changing substantive meaning or something. You know, editors you know, pick up on things that we may not have noticed. And the reason I asked that, uh, Chair Lippert, it, yeah. it just, it, it, there's so much going on with it. I just want to make sure it's, it's, a, have a it's a completely reasonable request. And it's something which we often actually do. Uh, and so that's, that's I appreciate your, your asking for that. Yeah, because it's so, easier to remember to, to do that and say that when it's like, we've got all the papers, we're sitting around. It's like, okay, now I need to read through the whole thing before right, we jump right, into right, discussion. Right. And I mean, it's not yeah. unlike what Representative China has requested on several occasions. Can I have the time to read through this before we actually take any action? And Representative Donahue has done that. And I would time. actually, I would request it again too, if no one else had, honestly. Yeah. Because I always okay. think it's good. Okay. So, so good. what? So let me let me ask this. How shall we do this? We can we can, um, we could go off. Maybe we could go off YouTube, and let's go off YouTube and let's give ourselves. It's now three oh four. What if we were to go off YouTube for how much time should we take? 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Uh, is that sufficient? Is that not sufficient? I like 15 and then we can re we can con reconvene and if we're not ready yet, we can not go on YouTube and just okay. go back out and walk around the building and okay, go so outside let me, and that's, walk that's name Let's name a specific time. I'm gonna say that we come, it's now 3.04 on my clock. Let's say we return at 3.20. That gives everybody 16, 15 minutes now, it's 3.05. So let's return at 3.20. So for those who are following us on YouTube, we're gonna take a 15 minute break and we're gonna reconvene the committee at 3.20, at which point I'm anticipating that we'll engage in committee discussion.